Okay, mobsters and my business and Matt coming at you live, man, giving you the motherfucking update from the court from November 18th that um, went very well. I must say so myself. I'm so proud of my attorney, man. He went from DeMar Robert Z. DeMarco to the great Robert Z. motherfucking DeMarco. Because what he extrapolated out of that prosecutor was so valuable. Yeah, we put the prosecutor on the stand. You, you don't see that one. That's how you know they foul. That's how you know they foul. When, when he got to get up on the stand, because you could rest assured that ain't something that he want to do. The egregious violations of the law that was broken, the corruption that was displayed, is what put him in a position where he had to explain that shit, and he couldn't do it. He got up there, he got caught in so many lies. I can't even go play by play. I'll just give you a couple of them. For instance, he lied about Keith Brown, who was my attorney. Let me be clear. Keith Brown was my attorney, and they got Keith Brown to get on the stand and testify against me. He really didn't want to fully cooperate, so he get up there in. You know, when when you got an unorganized lie, because the lie wasn't really all the way put together, but it was good enough to get away with what they get away with because don't nobody challenge it. And then most of the time, it go years without being challenged. And he get away with it. So Keith Brower testified, and... The, the prosecutor said that Keith Bauer testified that he, uh, he called the female and she answered the phone and gave me the phone and pow, two hours later, she's dead. And he said he spoke with Andre Dow. The Marco go to the transcript and what he testified to was totally different from what the prosecutor just said on the stand. He said that he called the female talked to her, asked about me, uh, shortly thereafter, after, a male voice came over the phone, and he wasn't sure if it was me. He wasn't sure if it was Mr. Dow. Don't know who it was. But Mouton testified in his recant that the homicide from the, uh, uh, Nevada and Fairfield got in touch with him because when they found his number in a dead prostitute's phone. And they called the number, he answered it, and they, that's when all of the shenanigans took place. He got caught in that lie. Then he lied about his closing argument. I didn't mention Mouton, as if to say Mouton wasn't important. They would say, oh, Antoine Mouton, his testimony's not that important. We didn't even need it. Bitch, you a lie. Everything that was connected to me was through the fabricated testimony of Mouton. Mouton is the one who said that I told him that I did something to Fat Tone and, 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 and uh, Cowboy behind Mac Dre. Mouton is the one that said that I said, like the bitch in California. That's what Mouton said. When the, when the lawyer read his testimony, read with his diatribe in his closing argument because he said his, his co-counsel, Chi, the Chinese guy, said that a prosecutor's closing rebuttal is the most important part of a trial. Closing arguments. Because what they do, they extrapolate the data, get it together, and then pick it apart. And give you, the, 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 give you a bunch of... Um, Sound bites. He said this, he said that, he said this, he testified to that. That's what he do. So when we when DeMarco went through with he really testified to with how he said it and how you use Mouton, Mouton was the only person that connected me or to, for any reason for y'all to even have a trial, it was through Mouton. And you gave a special hearing for him. You gave an evidentiary hearing for a paid informant. Then the prosecutor said, I didn't know it was a federal uh, paid informant. I don't work for the feds. Bitch, you're supposed to know that. That's a Brady. Because Brady is so strong that even if you didn't know, you should have known. Irrespective of the good faith, the bad faith. 
You can't get out of it by saying I didn't know or I didn't have it. No, you should have had it. You can't say, oh, I didn't know he was in a federal facility trying to call a witness and dissuade a young witness not to testify against him. Man, let me say this and let me be abundantly clear. I ain't never had pipping and pandering and none of that shit on my record. None whatsoever. I got two drug cases. Possession and the possession to sell. How do they pivot from a pedophile pimp taking a female across a young girl, 13, across state and county lines, selling her body for him? Then he hospitalized one prostitute. She was in general hospital. So we know he will put his hands and feet on a female, right? How the fuck y'all pivot all the way from him to me? The, the, the prostitute had DNA under her nail. She scratched somebody. When they ran, when they ran my DNA, it didn't come back my DNA. But guess what? The prosecutor never mentioned that. The whole plot was to get Andre Dow in the penitentiary for the rest of the century. That was the whole move. And it by, by any G's necessary, we don't give a fuck. What we gotta do to get him in there, we gonna do it. By any G's necessary. Didn't matter how he was gonna do it. Because once you're convicted of a crime of the nature of murder, man, that's hard to come back from unless you got what I got. Some clear and convincing evidence of perjury, corruption, uh, uh, all kind of uh, uh, pressure. Because that was the word he used, pressure. Oh, Mr. Dow put a, he, 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 um, he put a, a, a video up with Gangster Chronicles to pressure. Bitch, I ain't pressure nobody. Mutai said that the feds, the motherfucking, uh, um, Metro from Las Vegas homicide and homicide from Fairfield got him in the room and started to squeeze him. And then they came up with their story. That's what he testified to. And painted him in it. He don't even know how he got in it. All he know, he was in the middle of it and didn't know what he was getting himself into until he got to Las Vegas. Now ain't that a bitch. But you want to, but you want to believe out of all that he said that the prosecutor can say that the December the fifth was something that he didn't mean to say was unintentional. He misspoke. He meant to say December '05. Nah, bitch, you don't get out of that. You do not get out of that like that. It stood for 16 years. For 16 years, eight months. That was what was on the record. And nobody had a problem with it until a lot activated Latif Gray. And Latif went into the, I mean, I'm talking about the prosecutor files because he was the only one that could have did what he did at the time. Nobody else was going to do it. They upset with Latif for bringing that Brady to me. They put Latif on the stand, which was another mistake because you weren't dealing with no weekly. You're dealing with a sharp mind. I mean, this nigga is sharper than a mosquito's needle. You're not dealing with no bum. You're not dealing with no punk. You're not dealing with an educated coward. You're dealing with an educated soldier. It's going to stand up for what's right. And you're not going to get him off of that right square. He on the right side of it. And because he on the right side of it and he believe in God, he know these demons can't do shit to him. The prosecutor kept acting like he was going to play the Gangster Chronicles video. Bitch, you ain't playing that video. And he didn't play it. He bluffed, 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 walked, got it out, got it in there. And if you don't think I'm going to bring that shit up on December the 2nd in closing arguments, because if the judge is following the law, I'm going, I'm coming home, y'all. December the 2nd, I'm coming home. That's my closing argument. That's the last court day. And at the very least, if it go bad, nigga got action at a writ of six church arrest. That's a writ to the United States Supreme Court. And you can best believe him, I'm tailor-made for it. 
all of the shit they did, took my lawyer, put the lawyer on the stand. I'm talking about when they search the record, because that's what a real search review is. It's for them to search the record. When they go search the record and look at that, including the Brady violation, man, these motherfuckers going to be in trouble. The judge make that ruling, she going to put her career in trouble. But I'm not even going to be so quick to say that she's going to be on the wrong side of it. Because I can assure you, her energy changed. She started to look at him different. Like, not only you a liar, but you a liar that got caught in all your lives. And you up here talking as if you don't even understand Brady. I do not have a, a, a degree in um, political science. But like I always say, I don't know everything about the law, but I know everything that got to do with me. And when I'm telling you, I know Brady. And because I know Brady, it was like 15 different Brady violations that came up. Him saying that he didn't know about uh, Mouton being in the uh, federal facility, uh, 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 contacting a witness and trying to dissuade him in to testify. That's Brady. You don't got to know. You should have known. It happened in 06. It happened before the trial. He got an FBI card in his pocket in 05. To show that he's a paid informant. But you say he didn't know, you should have known. That's Brady. We could, we could sit here on the phone for the next couple of hours and I could point out uh, a thousand more Brady violations. The December the 5th, 05, that's Brady. And his perjury. <clears throat> but the judge knows if she capitulate to that truth, if she capitulate to the fact that it just in fact Mouton, that she believed Mouton's testimony of December the 5th, 2005, she got to let me go. Because that go right to Mooney B. Houlihan, where it's a, he inexpertly put his paperwork together, and because he showed that the prosecutor knowingly used perjured testimony and suppressed the evidence, that that person is to be released from its custody. That's why you've been seeing certain people get overturned and walk right out of the courtroom. Those are Brady violations, which is the most powerful motion in the land. There is no state that can say our state law don't abide by Brady. Only one trying to do that is the state of Nevada. That's they, they, this, this the only people down here that's trying to pull that. But CBS is sitting there watching all this, and they so used to normal operations that they, it's like, they, they start to do what they normally do, and they do what they normally do, and ain't even paying attention that the cameras is on them as they do it. And all this is going to unfold, and it's going to come right before the world. The world is watching this. It just ain't been, it's, she just ain't pushed play on it. Because she can't believe all of this that's coming out in the manner that it's coming out. You got a prosecutor on the stand that got caught in several lies. He has a flagrant disregard for judicial protocol. And from what I'm looking at, hopefully the judge is not complicit. Because he's foul. And this is what he do. And he's done this on so many different occasions. This is what he do. You can tell by the way he conducts himself. He's arrogant, he's disrespectful, and he's a bigot. No, he's a fat, bigot bitch. That's what he is. Thank you for using Securus. Goodbye.